Hi everybody, welcome to a new PyTorch tutorial. This time I want to talk about activation functions. Activation functions are an extremely important feature of neural networks, so let's have a look at what activation functions are, why they are used, what different types of functions there are, and how we incorporate them into our PyTorch model. So activation functions apply a linear transformation to the layer output and basically decide whether a neuron should be activated or not. So why do we use them? Why is only a linear transformation not good enough? So typically we would have a linear layer in our network that applies a linear transformation. So here it multiplies the input, input with some weights and maybe adds a bias and then delivers the output. And let's suppose we don't have activation functions in between. Then we would have only linear transformations after each other. So our whole network from input to output is essentially just a linear regression model. And this linear model is not suited for more complex tasks. So the conclusion is that with non-linear transformations in between, our network can learn better and perform more complex tasks. So after each layer, we typically want to apply this activation functions. So here, um, first we have our normal linear layer and then we also apply this activation function. And with this, our network can learn better. And now let's talk about the most popular activation functions. So the ones I want to show you is the binary step function, the sigmoid function, the hyperbolic tangent function, the ReLU, the leaky ReLU and the softmax. So let's start with the simple step function. So this will just output one if our input is greater than a threshold. So here the threshold is zero and zero otherwise. So this is not used in practice actually, but this should, should demonstrate the example of if the neuron should be activated or not. And yeah, so a more popular choice is the sigmoid function. And you should already know this if you've watched my tutorial, tutorial about logistic regression. So the formula is one over one plus e to the minus x. And this will output a probability between zero and one. And this is typically used in the last layer of a binary classification problem. So yeah. Then we have the hyperbolic tangent function or tan h. This is basically a scaled sigmoid function and also a little bit shifted. So this will output a value between minus one and plus one. And this is actually a, a good choice in hidden layers. So you should know about the tan h function. Then we have the relu function. And this is the most popular choice in, in most of the networks. So the ReLU function will output zero for negative values and it will simply output the uh, input as output for positive values. So it is actually a linear function for values greater than zero and it is just zero for negative values. So it doesn't look that much different from just a linear transformation, but in fact it is non-linear and it is actually the most popular choice in the networks and it's typically a very good choice for an activation function. So the rule of thumb is if you don't know which function you should new use, then just use a ReLU for hidden layers. Yeah, so this is the ReLU, very popular choice. Then we also have the leaky relu function. So this is a slightly modified and slightly improved version of the relu. So this will still just output the input for x greater than zero, but this will multiply our uh, input with a very small value for negative numbers. So here I've written a times x for negative numbers. And this a is typically very small. So it's for example, 0 0.001. And this is an improved version of the ReLU that tries to solve the so-called vanishing gradient problem. 
because with a normal ReLU, our values here are zero. And this means that also the gradient later in the backpropagation is zero. And when the gradient is zero, then this means that these weights will never be updated. So these neurons won't learn anything. And we also say that these neurons are dead. And this is why uh, sometimes you want to use the leaky ReLU function. So whenever you notice that your weights won't update during training, then try to use the leaky ReLU instead of the normal ReLU. And yeah, then as a last function, I want to show you the softmax function. And you also should already know this because I have a whole tutorial about the softmax, fu softmax function. So this will just, this will basically squash the inputs to be outputs between zero and one so that we have a probability as an output. And this is typically a good choice in the last layer of a multi-class classification problem. So yeah, that's the different actuation functions I wanted to show you. And now let's jump to the code and see how we can use them in PyTorch. So we have two options. <clears throat> and the first one is to create our functions as NN modules. So in our network, in the init function, first we define all the layers we want to have. So here, for example, first we have a linear layer. And then after that, we want to have a ReLU actuation function. So we create our ReLU module here. And we can get that from the torch.nn module. So this contains all the different functions I just showed you. And then we have the next layer for here example, it's a next linear layer. And then the next actuation function. So here we have a sigmoid at the end. And then in the forward pass, we simply call all these functions after each other. So first we have the linear, the first linear layer, which gets an output. And then we use this output at, and put it into our ReLU. And then again, we use this output and put it in the next linear layer and so on. So this is the first way how we can use it. And the second way is to use these functions directly. So in the init function, we only define our linear layers. So linear one and linear two. And then in the forward pass, we apply this linear layer and then also call this torch.relu function here and then the torch.sigmoid function directly. So this is just from the torch API. And yeah, this is a different way how we can use it. Uh, both ways will achieve the same thing. It's just um, how you prefer your code. And yeah, so all the functions that I just showed you, you can get from the NN module. So here we had NN ReLU, but we can, for example, also have NN dot sigmoid and we have NN dot softmax and we have NN dot ton H um, and also nn dot leaky relu. So all these functions are available here. And they are also available in the torch API like this. So here we have torch dot relu, then we have torch dot sigmoid. We also have torch dot softmax and torch dot ton age. And but sometimes they are not used in the the functions are not available in the torch API directly, but they are available in torch.nn.functional. So here I imported torch nn functional sf, and then I can call here, for example, f.relu. So this is the same as torch.relu, but here, for example, is the torch uh, is f.leaky relu is only available in this API. So yeah, but that's how we can use the activation functions in PyTorch and it's actually very easy. And I hope you understood everything and now feel comfortable with activation functions. If you like this, please subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.